Hello, hello, how are you guys doing? Green screen, man, come on. There we go. <laughs> What's up, guys? Um, so, uh, let, let's put a, uh, a forward uh, right away. I've been away for this week, uh, for the most part, and uh, I caught up just an hour ago to a lot of things. So, uh, from Wednesday, I think. Some of the chats I haven't read since Wednesday, roughly, so uh, DMs were not piling up, so I didn't read a lot of the things. But there's a few DMs that I have to go through, uh, specifically from Crook, uh, still. Uh, if you're here, sorry I didn't reply, it just been away, it's all. Uh, so, I'll get to it. Uh, we'll get sorted through all of those tomorrow uh, I think a lot of the questions have been answered already by the team during the the, the, the the week so I don't know I don't have like any specific uh, agenda and for some reason the chat doesn't work on stream hold on wait a second here what's going on man Nope. Huh. Interesting. Very strange. Well, I'll just disable uh, chat on the overlay, I guess. Uh, I'll just switch to this. I think it's a little bit more chill. In a way, uh, plus if uh, we want to show off something, we'll be able to do that there. Uh, I'll add Twitch chat though. Four, five, six. Yeah, bugs. Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, let me add the chat box uh, from Twitch real quick. I had it on restream. I don't know why it doesn't work. Uh, what was this? Oh, there we go. That's us. There we go. Oop. This should be fine. Let's test it. Yep. There we go. <laughs> uh, sorry about that guys I don't know what happened to the chat sometimes the, these things just decide to be updated and not work anymore but uh, I'm getting sidetracked a little bit so uh, during the week uh, I do know that there's a few <laughs> guys come on <laughs> we're gonna get banned they're gonna think we're boss bro <laughs> um so there's a, been a conversation regarding tournaments from uh, not tournaments raids from what I understood. Uh, let me open up the raids real quick. Uh, so the, the information that was given out, if uh, I'm not mistaken, was that uh, when players get into a specific percentage bracket, they get a like. It's still random depending on uh, the percentage. So if you didn't get like a dead on top one placement, if there's more than uh, 150 people, there's a chance that you might not get the top 2% raffle. But uh, here's how it works from what I remember uh, when we were uh, creating the system. So the top one, uh, the, the the first place uh, player will always get the prize, like guaranteed. If they're top one, uh, top one in the leaderboard for that particular raid, uh, when it ends, uh, they get the prize. Um, after that, it's a little bit different. Uh, for example, if you got second and third place, and there's about 200 players going through for the raid at the moment, uh, there's a chance that you or the person in the third Place will get the uh, top two percent special reward. Uh, you are guaranteed. Uh, okay, let me show you the window real quick here. Let's upload this a little bit. Yep. 
Okay. I can actually cut this a little bit shorter here and make it bigger. One sec. There we go. Okay, so uh, let's take the current raid boss, right? So uh, right now we have. Hundred fifty people, actually. So one hundred fifty people that did at least one damage. Um, so in this case, uh, there is a chance that Fade Out and Simbar are going to be uh, battling for this special reward. So uh, to make it a little bit more clear, let's uh, let's go through the uh, guaranteed rewards, right? First and foremost. Uh, guaranteed rewards are the ones that you get assigned depending on your bracket. So for example, if you're like uh, in the top 2%, so in this case, I would think that's going to be Fade Out and Sambar. You guys will definitely get these. Like, this will be automatically rewarded every time, uh, like, in, in this, uh, when when this raid boss ends and you win it. Uh, for 10%, uh, the next 15 people will go through the raffle, right? So, up to Suck Token. No, I think uh, to Zix. In this case uh, because there's 150 people 15 people will be going through the raffle hi warm punk how are you doing there so uh, every single time uh, a boss is beaten it goes through stages of raffle uh, we did talk about it I think a lot of people uh, may have forgotten uh, when we spoke about this uh, when we released the Re red devil I think uh, raid boss it was uh, quite a bit ago so understandably some people might have forgotten or didn't know how this um, was uh, released <sighs> T. okay so uh, first place 100% gets the top one prize um, and I I'm not sure about the guaranteed prize I think they are getting only this <clears throat> I might be up though. Uh, they, they might get top 2% uh, stuff as well. Anywho, afterwards, um, every single player from top 1 are participating in a raffle. So, top 2% players, uh, in this case, uh, Sambara and uh, Fade Out, as we see. Sorry. Uh, see here. Uh, hold on, I'm going to go through this and then I'm going to address uh, the, the the statement, okay? Uh, just give me a second here. I want to go through it like in one fell swoop so uh, it's more coherent because it's kind of tricky to explain uh, in a way. For me at least. Maybe I'm just bad at explaining things. Sorry. Uh, anywho, uh, after that, uh, the two, top 2% is raffled. So. Whenever this gets raffled, so for example, Fade Out wins the top 2%. Afterwards, Saimbara is still... Uh, Fade Out is not getting more prizes afterwards. He already got top 2% prize, uh, special reward. So he's out of the raffles, but Saimbara goes to uh, is added to the pool of top 10% raffle. Meaning that he has a chance of winning this. Uh, but it's you know a big a bigger pool of players therefore it's a lesser chance of uh, winning that in this case it's like 50 50 right uh, in this case it's more of a 10 percent chance roughly let's call it seven percent chance uh, if it's uh, 150 players right roughly obviously uh, if Simon Barra doesn't win the top 10 percent he is added to top 80 percent raffle uh if he doesn't win there well bad luck uh but he still gets uh i think the top two percent guaranteed reward uh without uh the special rewards and everyone gets uh obviously season points that's pretty much how it goes uh, now to address something uh, hold on, let me close this real quick. Uh, where was this? 
Sun. Uh, da, 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 da. I think. He... Uh, sure, uh, okay. I wanted to address this uh, real quick here. Uh, I'm not completely sure, but I would think that 2% works the same way as top 80. Yes, random players, a group, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there was another statement here in regards of. Uh... Do, 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 do. Where was this? I distinctly remember. I just read it and I want to find it again. Mm. Okay, 150 plus. Uh, yeah, here uh, Mr. Klasun is right. Uh, what was the issue that I had? One like s some piece of information that was uh, posted was not entirely correct from what I remember. Uh, da -da -da. Oh, okay. Uh, random player in the group would get reward, having greater chances for those who dealt greater damage. Uh, from what I know, personally, I, d I don't know if that's true uh, exactly because of one specific thing. Uh, one key detail was um, when the damage is calculated, uh, the, the placements are calculated, uh, we had a couple of instances where players dealt exactly the same amount of damage. So, uh, the... F I think the first one um, that deals the that amount of ja damage uh, takes the spot, the higher spot. Basically, uh, for example, Fade Out and Sambar had 162 damage, and Fade Out did the more damage first. Uh, he would take the second place, uh, while Sambar would be in third place uh, at that at, at that particular moment. So I think that's what uh, Mr. Klesun has been talking about. I might be a little bit off uh, here. Um, it's either uh, I still don't. Uh, I don't know at the moment exactly how it's code wise, but I think that was like whoever first deals damage to the raid boss uh, for that amount gets the higher placement. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, random. Um, like the, the raffles themselves, I don't think they're impacted by uh, heavier damage. I might be a little bit off there, but to, to my knowledge, that's not true. Uh, I'm not calling uh, Mr. Klesun a liar here. I'm just saying that from what I know uh, would have been discussed uh, with Helmut and um, the developer team, that was not the case uh, when I talked about this last with them. If that changed, we'll update you guys, but I don't think that plays a very important role because it's a random raffle. I'm not calling you a liar, Bugs. Come on, man. I'm just saying that it. I don't think that's that works like that according to the information that was given. That's all. Not calling you a liar. Why would I call you a liar, man? Uh, it should show uh, what prizes you are currently qualified for, just like the set, so we know where we are. Uh, the bug is it shows player A in second and player B in third while the raid is active, but when the player is going out. Flip flop. Uh, I think that was that was an issue uh, a while back, but I think it was patched out, Warren Funk, uh, where they, when uh, the uh, places were like flip-flopped when the raid ended i think it was patched out and uh, if there's 150 players uh second and third place uh gets um you know uh whichever whoever wins basically they they both are participate in the raffle i think uh the more damage you do the higher chances of you winning he showed like six months ago huh interesting Again, for, for to my recollection, that's that wasn't how it was shown to me at the time. This was mainly raid versus uh, version 2.0. Okay, so uh, bah, 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 bah. this is v1. This is v2, right? 
again uh with these um different raid bosses it's really hard to keep track of all the roles honestly uh in the head i will consult the documentation uh and like talk with the team tomorrow uh when i'm gonna be in the office just to make it you know as transparent as possible uh maybe we'll do a post about it how it works pro properly so there's no misconceptions on this uh as a whole i'm gonna actually write it down uh Uh, boss damage. There we go. The flip flopping, although I think it happened in the season rate too, I will be on the lookout for it to see if it happens again. Sure, Warren Fog, if that happens again, let me know. But I think uh, it has been patched out uh, a couple of months ago. I think in the previous season, actually, when. Uh, uh, a couple of players had that situation happen a lot of the time, especially Fade Out. I uh, had this happen to him like three times. So he was really, really adamant about it and uh, posted uh, the information in DMs all the time about it. And uh, it was patched out. Hey, Copernicus, what's up, man? We need to be able to see the prizes we are currently qualified for so we can see which place we are in. Sure, um, I'll add that to the list as well. Uh, sure. Um, uh, visual confirmation of there we go. You don't really see uh what I have here. <laughs> uh, it's just a uh, note that thingy. Or keep notes. I have a bunch of them. Like so. Uh, by the way, I wanted to see this tournament real quick <clears throat> with you guys. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, which uh, uh, previous seasons I believe had the show? Uh, you mean the issue uh, with the? <clears throat> Sorry, uh, you mean the issue with the raid boss? Yes, there there was uh, a few instances of that issue happening. <clears throat> I was here. <laughs> the current president you're qualified for, yeah. That's uh, what I wrote down. Currently uh, qualifying for. Yeah, that's better, I think. Thank you. Uh, okay, so let's see this fight real quick. So uh, it broke in between somewhere. Uh, what do you mean broke in between somewhere? Not sure what you mean here. Like, uh, during season three, there was an issue like that, but it was patched. So right now it shouldn't be an issue. However, the flip-flopping might occur uh, when the boss is finalized and the prizes are given out. So, for example, uh, there's 160 people playing the raid boss, right? So, two, uh, top, uh, like, top two and top three player will be competing for the top two percent correct so it, when the person on the third spot for example wins the raffle he gets automatically probably like put higher on the scoreboard perhaps maybe that's uh why it shows like that but i'm not sure like i can't say it for, like with 100 percent certainty right now <clears throat> uh bugs uh, i did i do remember nikita fixing it though I think I think it was like attempted a few times and on the last time it was patched from what I know. We have very very confusing information then. Okay. Okay, uh, let, uh, let us know. Uh okay. Hold on. Let me open up that. Uh
Okay, uh, but this is... Oh, okay, this was close due to a duplicate, okay. Okay, so uh, Okay, but I think that that was done though Mr. Bugs I think that was done uh, The thing that Helmut posted uh, in response to that task um, was done i think i might be wrong i might be wrong uh maybe i'm confusing something but i think it's done uh let's see tomorrow uh what will happen uh we'll, we'll get to this uh issue and talk it out uh bc okay <clears throat> Okay, dokale. All right, sixty-two percent evade. Um, the thing is with the uh, evasion, uh, I do remember uh, the game design plan was to cap it at some number. I think it was really close to sixty to sixty-five range. I'm not sure exactly, but. Uh, there are going to be caps on some stats like for example evasion and luck because if someone gets like 100 percent luck somehow that's not gonna bode well for the player against them right uh but still 62 percent evasion is insane and uh luck is really really bad though so uh we'll see how this plays out uh minus two uh i have no idea honestly i think it just doesn't roll I don't think I, I don't think they roll at the moment there's no like negative connotation to it they just don't roll for true strike um, honestly I don't think there's like negative impact uh, from that stat yes I think uh, you're correct here Warren Funk I think that it doesn't impact uh, negatively for now for now I think uh, what do you guys think about this though uh, if someone has a minus two stat, uh, let's say in luck or evasion, they roll. They have to roll for like uh, critical failure. They have to beat like the same roll as you do for like uh, true strike, right? Uh, hundred uh, difficulty class, you roll a one d hundred and uh you roll f yeah yeah exactly one funk that's what i'm uh, trying to convey yeah if you if you roll um uh, no 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 if you don't roll huh that's interesting so uh if you roll 99 or 100 something bad will happen i guess yeah i think that would make more sense than uh what i had in mind but um you, you get my point basically if, uh, there should be a penalty for negative stats instead of like nullifying them uh, to a non variable which it is right now okay uh, okay so well, let's see here so they both went okay with survival checks and uh, let's play this baby <clears throat> Same bar, you need to name your cutie, man. Come on, <laughs> it just says the cutie number. Come on, man. From what I just, from what I understand, it's a pretty long battle, dude. But again, there's no like crits. On same bar security while still having the insane evasion and lesser like 
It's more of like a glass cannon build, if anything, I think. Like you would make in, say, Diablo, for example. You go full uh, evasion and uh, crits with like a very, very low HP pool. Same thing here, I think. Well, minus the health pool thing, obviously. Seriously, the, like, the amount of, if, like, <laughs> Jesus, the evasion is insane, man. It would be so funny. Yeah, <laughs> oh my god. I thought the winner would be the evasive cutie from Sambara, dude. If I'm honest, what the hell? That was really close, like 8 HP left. I really hope that uh, that we'll be able to add the more diversity to it really soon because uh, it's already interesting and I want more, you know, greedy like that. It all came down to the last 15th round. <clears throat> there was 84 damage done and Yikes. Well, honestly, either way, this cutie wins, if, even if he rolls a 2. Like, if it's a 1, obviously, yeah, uh, it's lost, but, like, let's be realistic. <clears throat> 2, 3, and 4, like, he survives, unless it's a critical fail on defense. Not bad. It's interesting, though. 62... Yikers, man. This is where, like, the big numbers came in for uh, Clayton here. With, like, that 24% luck, uh, True Strike does a hell of a lot of damage. Like, it's, like, roughly a quarter of the... How is it so high? Equipment? Uh, yeah, the, the equipment gives him pretty high roll, pretty high stats. So, like, let's see, it's level 12, for starters. There's no generation gap, there's a level gap, though. Uh, which gives, I think, dragon food one point over... Uh, like, one power point over Sainbaras Cutie, right? And 62 is probably this set. Yeah, this set. Uh, hold on. Uh, let me take a look at the items real quick. Do, 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 do. I think they're wait, they weren't in the season adventure, were they? Yeah. Um. Hold on. Uh, let me just generate a couple of, on the admin account real quick and uh, see what we got. If we don't have them already, on this. No, I don't. But all sorts of bonuses? Uh, not yet. I haven't updated the items tab on the wiki, and I never got the time. Like, I never got around to like f refilling the vic wiki completely. So, I should do that uh, in the following weeks. Uh, I don't think Simbaros Cutie does a true strike in uh, the whole battle. Uh, we'll, we'll review it in a second. Hold on. Uh, equipment. Let me find the set real quick. Where was it? Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is the admin account that is not played, but... I can generate stuff on it, so... Set stuff? Okay, let's take a look. Um, I can actually... Generation. So we have... 
chcem. Chcem. Ups. Plus 10. Um, ba, ba, ba. For, for a three piece set, you get plus 10 as well. So that's only 40. So there's 22 that came up from a different aspect. Hold on. Uh, there were like, let's see about the true strike thing. Uh, that Midnight talked about. Those are all evasions. Uh, this cutie never rolls for a true strike because it doesn't have any luck. It has a minus two luck, so it's a zero in the eyes of the system at the moment. So the. Oh, hello. What? I see what you're talking about here. This is actually, I think, a bug. Good catch. I didn't notice this. That shouldn't happen, I think. It's weird. Maybe because it's minus two and not a zero, it actually has a small, slight chance of rolling. Huh. Very weird. Uh, which round is it? Okay, I posted the thing. It's about for sure. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think when. We'll see what the team says. I posted it in the uh, game design chat. Uh, let's see what they say. Uh, okay, so those are. I think I have those on this account. No, I don't. Bracelet? Nope. Yeah, I don't have those. Uh, jade, bra jade bracelets. Let's see. Uh, marketplace items. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's a very weird coincidence. I didn't. I didn't see that before. Uh, so we'll talk about that tomorrow with, uh, on the stand up for the team and see what uh, can be done. I think that there should be a. There will be a review first, um, and then we'll get to a solution. I've seen three or four in a row true strike against cuties. Uh, but did they have luck, Amelcar? If they had luck, that's fine. Uh, if they didn't have luck or negative luck. That's not fine. That's the thing. If they have zero luck or negative luck, they shouldn't roll for a true strike at all. B no, due, due to the uh, nature of uh, the stat itself. Dude, where's no one selling Jade? Really? Huh. What was this? Hold on. Admin panel. It's very strange. Honestly, it's very strange. The thing is, like, when you have 20-25% uh, lock, 3-4 true strikes in a row, technically they are possible, right? Uh, every single time it rolls, it rolls RNG, so... Every single uh, run, every single 
role, I mean, uh, technically can have uh, whichever. It can be like it's. There's a fallacy of thinking that uh, if you roll four times, one of them is definitely going to be uh, a true strike if there's 25% chance on it. Uh, the reality of it is is that every single time you roll, there is a 25% chance of it rolling the crit, right? Uh, and it's similar in this case as well. Each time you go, there's no pseudo random that kind of uh, adds everything up, right? Uh, it's a very very straightforward uh, system is just uh, with the pseudo random in many games it has been kind of changed in perception uh, Warren Funk I've been on uh, vacation for the last two weeks man uh, Secretary General Division and Fox represent uh, that's 54 that's 54 so we're lacking 8% where did the 8% come from uh, hold on so many sets okay so 5% comes from the flaming orb as well and yeah, three percent uh, chicken bracers. Uh, the gambler fallacy. I think that's what it called. I, I was I was not like certain. Uh, yeah, I can Google it. Hold on. <laughs> also known as Monte Carlo fallacy. Uh, hold on, let me open up the. It's not gonna be. <laughs> uh, it's not fully in the screen, but uh, I'll just read it off as it is. Uh, gambler's fallacy, the gambler's fallacy, also known as Monte Carlo fallacy, of the fallacy of the maturity of chances, is the erroneous belief that uh, in a particular event occurs more frequently than uh, normal during the past is likely to happen in the future, or vice versa. Uh, when it happens otherwise, be established that the pro uh, probability of such events does not depend on what happened in the past. Yes, exactly. That's that's the uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, such events having a quality of historical independence are referred to statistically independent. Yes, uh, accumulation of the gambling, whereas may believe, for example, that the next dice roll is more than usually likely to be six, uh, there because there have recently been less than the usual number of sixes. It's a one in six chance, right? So, out of 12 rolls, it, it's probably gonna have one six at least, right? Statistically speaking, but that's not uh, how it usually turns out, right? I mean, it can happen it can not happen there's like difference of uh, real outcomes and uh, expectations I think we have tunnel vision on the numbers when it negatively affects us in, in regards to RNG and we don't remember when we have the stroke of good luck uh, that also is true Warner Punk um, me and my friends like about I don't know five six years ago when I was still uh, very very into CSGO we opened uh, up chests and stuff. I never had good luck. I actually, like, not because I didn't get m many good rolls or anything, it's just I never really got good rolls on those, you know, loot boxes. While my friends opened up knives, gloves, everything like that costed like 300 bucks and up. It, it pissed me to no end. But that's how it goes. Um, and. In this case, actually, with uh, CSGO and Dota, for that matter, especially in Dota, uh, there is a uh, sort of a guarantee of drop, right? Uh, I think in CSGO, it's not as um, high comparing to Dota, but uh, there's this co thing called pseudorandom, so that actually uh, embraces the gambler's uh, fallacy fully like full on basically what it does is um it corrects the rng so uh for example in dota 
uh, you get items that give you crit like basically how it does like similarly to what we have here but the thing is uh, it can be either insanely good and you just one shot everything in the game throughout the whole game there's a couple of heroes uh, in the game that actually are based on crit and if they get a good roll all the time with normal RNG uh, they're slaughtering the whole server while if they if someone has a bad role they can't do anything so valve introduced pseudo random if i remember correctly uh which kind of kind of like uh, runs the statistics in the background uh according to what you've done throughout the game so for example if your last 10 hits did not crit uh the 11th one has high chances of critting so if you have like 30 percent crit rate and you hit seven times without a single crit the eighth time is gonna have like a very very small percentage of a not being a crit so that's a pseudo random thing uh pure rng doesn't oblige to that rule those rules it's it's uh, every single instance of the role is statistically independent as they, as they said in the gambler's fallacy article before and uh yeah, there's like they, they there, there there can be like three four hits like that in a row, or you can get bad rolls for like seven fights in a row. With like for example, you have like sixty evasion and you don't evade for like three fights in a row. You you have zero evasion done because of just bad RNG. But how many did they open and not tell you uh, about that had nothing great in it? Uh, you mean my friends? Uh, we did this on uh, streams, actually. We did this on streams, we did this uh, like uh, in videos and stuff like that. And my friends actually did... I wouldn't say they did like spectacularly, like the unboxing people on YouTube, for example, or Twitch, like when they opened up like 2000 cases and got some stuff. No. Uh, they opened up like a hundred chests and uh or boxes whatever you want to call them and got you know out of those hundred they might have gotten like two good items that kind of paid for the whole like endeavor technically speaking but i mean i didn't even get there man <laughs> that's what i was trying to say uh i think in csgo it's not as uh it, it doesn't oblige like it doesn't embrace the gambler's fallacy it actually g goes more pure rng than uh in dota uh, in dota it's actually you get rewards if you open more boxes there's a higher and higher chance that you get us like a rare item uh in some instances they actually have like a lineup and you when you open them uh the chances of getting uh duplicates is lower and lower every single time you open one but uh depending on the event uh it might be very very negligible actually so th there's very many different approaches to this uh and dota actually ma managed to make it uh seem not predatory while it kind of re is really really predatory about it so there there's like there's many different approaches to those kind of things and uh we went with the pure rng actually we didn't like add any like additional things to it it's just a really simple rng role which is a very very different thing uh, because uh, if you add like additional systems to it there might be instances where it doesn't work correctly or there's some weird anomaly and everything goes to crap you know i think pure rng is best in this case and I i've seen in a couple of chats uh, uh, especially in one of the, uh, what you call it? I think in the in the Russian chat, I did reply to a message uh, when uh, players have been talking about like uh, someone rolling di like playing dice, and there's like a 50/50 chance of winning in dice, and uh, the player didn't roll a winning roll in 15 times, and this is where like the gambler fallacy came in for me personally again. It's, it's a really hard thing to keep in mind every single time, especially when you're like trying to be, uh, especially in inter entertainment, like uh, 
you go to entertainment to you know let your emotions go have fun and when it's a little bit oh look if there's any stakes in it right especially monetary uh all logic goes out the window a lot of the time <clears throat> for anyone like um there's many people that are that i know are probably like the most reasonable and logically like well, logical people i know that go through life with like precision let's say okay but when there's like a gambling thing or or something to that accord like a, a, a like i don't know uh let's say playing diablo right uh or like any other mmo they're so hell bent on getting that drop it's absurd <laughs> so <clears throat> that's why uh a lot of uh posts come out that you know i didn't get lucky this this is bad blah 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 no it's just that happens man i really do understand the uh feeling of being let down in a way but you have to remember one thing uh if you're playing a game like games with uh chance there's always a chance that you will not win and there's always a chance that you will win so getting upset because the chance didn't roll in your favor uh that time it's 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 fine to get upset but you still have to remember that there might be a chance where you're on the other end of the spectrum so that's cool but if it's not something that you partake in you can make a different build for example full attack and defense no evasion no luck just brute force man <laughs> Um, and w with HP pools and all that stuff, I think that's going to be uh, a much more viable um, build going forward because uh, right now with st static base HP pools, those are a little bit weaker uh, if you look at these. But hey, maybe someone will figure out a combination that works like ex exceptionally well against like a build like this. I mean... Clayton's uh, Kuthas did pretty good work. Still, like, survived by a hair, though. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, things happen, man. We just have to remember, like, for, first and foremost, this is a game. And, uh, yeah, luck has a really, really big uh, impact on any game, actually. But uh, speaking of luck, I'll uh, make sure that we look into the issue of uh, True Strike. Uh, the Sandbar Scuti had the Chukanu bracelet that gives uh, three evasion. It's, it's a Chukanu bracelet. So, this set gives you 40% evasion total. Plus, there's 10%, uh, uh, as you said, from this uh, cutie's stats, Secretary General. Uh, plus, uh, Fox evasion plus 4%. And uh, it came out basically, this is 3 or 4%, I think. I think it's 3, yeah. So, it came out to this. And the flaming orb does five, I think five, yeah. Yeah, it, it gives five evasion as well, on its own, without like, yes, Chikano is plus, plus three evasion. The flaming orb is plus five, so 40, uh, 52, 57, wait, 57? Hold on. Okay, uh, let's redo this. Uh, 40, so that's 50, 54, sorry. 54, uh, that's 10% plus 4 from the fox, plus uh, 5 from the orb, plus 3% from the 
Ah, I can't type. Good. Um, so this equals to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 59, 62%. So everything works out, dude. Sixty-two percent, exactly. I mean, you can't really like fight against these sets. Like this is insane. Still, damage-wise, Jesus Christ! Like this, this is a plus five armor. This is not. <laughs> I mean, let's be real here. There's a lot of. Uh, there's 18 points of uh, damage from the season damage as well here so that's why it's like pretty high up there it loses by what uh, 32 quite significantly actually a third uh, of uh, this damage so by 16 points yeah 16 points lower than uh, Bakers. but as it's a uh, season uh, equipment it does a lot of damage yeah that's a really cool season build actually uh, from what I know like this this set is like one of the top tier sets at the moment uh, we did talk about this uh, a while ago before the season launch or during the season launch uh, these like three items are really really good in terms of uh, what they add to the performance of the cutie during the season and after the season they're going to be really powerful as well because well it's a three piece set that gives you a lot of stuff plus you have two slots to fill like more fill in like more stuff in there so there's an accessory and bracelet um slots that are open for you to explore uh for different options in this case i bar actually added like more evasion i think there's there might there might be a build that is a, a little bit even like roughly 70 percent um evasion actually uh, i'll need to take a look into that uh tomorrow do, 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 do. where's the note <laughs> okay um yeah so i think that's it for me tonight guys i hope you enjoyed this uh podcast i I hope we did have a little bit of uh, nice discourse here because uh, I do really much enjoy talking to you guys. Wait, what? Oh, no. what this? Right. Um, as I was saying, I really do enjoy doing this these guys with you. And uh, tell you what, send me in DMs uh, best fights that you get throughout the week. Uh, just send me a DM, I'll add it to the list and we'll go, uh, next stream we're probably gonna go through a lot of fights, see what people are doing and have a little bit of fun, uh, analyzing builds and taking them apart. Maybe I'll, uh, co like, coerce, uh, Helmut to join me, or Vladimir, uh, we'll see. But yeah, uh, guys, thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate every single one of you. Uh, thank you for all of your guys' feedback, uh, we do appreciate it, as always, and, uh, yeah, keep uh, keep on rolling. Let us know what you think about the season. How is it going for you? And uh, we'll do our best to uh, better the experience as we go along. The tree strike uh, bug is a key to get fixed. Uh, yeah, Warren Falk, I did add it to the list. I did add, to add it to the list, sir. Yes. I think it's very important as well. One of the most important things uh, in the new battle mechanic. Because, the, like, see, that... that, that uh is a very very sneaky bug that was not even like figured out during uh beta testing even so um uh, i'll get back to you on that tomorrow uh hopefully uh it'll be patched tomorrow maybe i i don't know how difficult it is to go through that and figure out uh, how to fix it i'm not a coder myself sadly but uh yeah that's it for me guys Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate your time. And uh, I am out. Bye-bye.